So you want to save time while getting the very best from your raw images. Well, I'm going to explain how Affinity Photo and a streamlined workflow can be the route to success. Pro photographers know that when it comes to processing imagery, raw files are the only way to go. With the exception perhaps of sports photographers who are maybe shooting pitch side and instantly wiring through JPEGs to a picture editor back at HQ, working pros should really only use RAW. But while selecting RAW images instead of JPEGs on the back of the camera takes just a moment, processing the images to get their full potential back at the computer will always take longer. Thanks to the amazing advances in RAW conversion software, photographers now have so much control when editing their RAW files, but on the flip side, more options can leave you a little disorientated as to what you adjust first, and this can slow down your processing time. While this isn't the end of the world for the everyday hobbyist, time is money for professional photographers, so figuring out a reliable workflow system is crucial to shoring up your image editing game. A big factor in the success of raw conversion workflow is the software that you choose. And while many photographers think Adobe is the only way to go, there are many alternatives and one of the best on the market is Affinity Photo, which is made by Serif. The software has everything you need to take a flat raw file and turn it into a perfectly polished photo, making sure that every pixel is reaching its potential. You can open your RAW file in Affinity Photo by simply dragging the file over the program icon or by opening up the program and then clicking File and Open before selecting the RAW file that you want to edit. The program will automatically open your RAW file in the Develop persona so you're ready to start editing. When you load up your image, the first task you should take on will make sure you see the image properly. It's counterintuitive and a waste of time to progress with any further editing steps before you set up the view of the image the way you want to see it. So the first task should be to select the crop tool, and this is found on the left hand side of the interface. If you want to use the keyboard shortcut, you'll see that it's identified by C. The crop tool will of course enable photographers to take a second go at nailing the composition of the frame. Today's high resolution cameras will enable you to crop heavily without overly compromising image quality, and there's no point editing pixels that you plan to throw away later. So let's crop first. What's more, the crop tool will offer you the opportunity to fine tune and fix wonky horizons, a must for professional landscape shooters, but less of a problem with our image here. So for my image, I'm just gonna drag the corners in using the mouse and straighten up slightly so that the pillars are exactly straight. To execute the crop, just hit enter. Of course, you can't get a complete true view of the image before correcting any distortion that has been created by the lens you've used to capture the image. This is particularly important when using a wide angle lens as the distortion is more pronounced and when working with portraits as you don't want the model's face to look unnatural. To fix this, just head over to lens and you'll see your lens profile distortion options on the right hand side of the interface. At the same time, you can click on chromatic aberration reduction and defringe. With the crop and the lens distortion corrected, it's time to move on to balance the exposure and this is where raw files really come into their own. You can start by clicking back onto the Basics tab and then clicking to make sure the Shadows and Highlights box is selected. You can then drag the Highlights slider to the left to recover detail in areas like the model's face. And if you want to reveal more detail in darker areas of the frame, you drag the Shadow slider to the right. Next up, adjusting the Exposure and Black Point sliders to balance out the histogram at the top right of the interface is the next way to go. I'm going to drag the black point a little bit further to the right and the exposure a little bit to the right as well. While it may be tempting to make local adjustments, let's just leave this for now and we'll get onto that at a later step. With the exposure balance, it's now time to focus your attention on any colour correction work you'd like to carry out. You can start by picking up where you left off in the basics tab and clicking on the white balance box. Dragging the slider to the left will cool the colour temperature while dragging it to the right will warm it up. I think that looks just about fine. You can also use the tint slider to change the tint of the frame. Again, that looks about right. Next, move on to the general saturation in the scene by adjusting the saturation and vibrance sliders found in the Enhance tab. Let's just boost those up a little by dragging the slider to the right. Affinity Photo enables users to take color work even further and this is done via the Tones tab. So head to the top, click on Tones, and there you can look at Curves, 
and we'll adjust ours by drawing the generic S shape. You can also experiment with black and white, although I want my image to be in color, so we will unclick that option for now. And you can even experiment with split toning. Again, we don't want that just at this moment. The image has moved on a great deal, but you can check your progress by clicking on the split preview options. You can see already our start image here and the work we've done on the left has made a great deal of difference to the image. Let's return to the main image preview. And we can now move on to fine tuning the details in the image. And to do this, we're gonna start by sharpening up the frame. To do this in Affinity Photo, simply access the details tab and click on the detail refinement box. Drag the sliders until you're happy with the amount of sharpening you want to see. At this stage, it can help to click on the magnify box and zoom in a little on your screen. To zoom out, just click Apple and Zero or the PC equivalent. This area of the interface is also where you can apply noise reduction to combat digital noise experienced at high ISO levels. And we'll definitely add some noise reduction here because this image was taken in very low light conditions, so I had to ramp up the ISO levels. Directly below the detail refinement box is the noise reduction box with the familiar sliders to fight grain, fire luminance, and color reduction sliding. So let's return to the basics tab. And the last step of the workflow is to implement any local adjustments that will add the final touches of perfection to the frame. Look to the left side of the Affinity Photo interface and you'll find a number of local adjustment tools. If you're working with portraits, you'll likely to take advantage of the red eye removal tool and the keyboard shortcut for this is R, before tidying up skin tones with the blemish removal tool and the keyboard shortcut for this is L. For landscape shooters though, you're more likely to want to access the overlay gradient tool. And the keyboard shortcut for this is G. When you click on this tool, it will give you the option to change the gradient from linear to elliptical to radial. And the one we're going to select is elliptical. Simply drag out a shape, and then you can use the second pointer to refine that shape further. I'm gonna move this into place and then I'm gonna direct the mouse over to the right side of the interface and just bump up the exposure slider a little bit more. And that will just help our subject stand out in the middle of the frame. Once I'm happy with this, I'm gonna click back onto the view tool and to complete the raw workflow adjustments, I'm gonna click on the develop button on the top left of the interface. You'll now notice that the image has been transformed into the software's photo persona. And this is where you can add further editing adjustments or you can click File, Save, and save the image in a new location of your choosing. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and you can learn more about Affinity Photo at affinity.serif.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>